Gideon with three hundred soldiers, once a mighty host was stood, camping in the Moray Valley, an uncounted multitude. But the Lord was helping Gideon and his brave and trusting band armed with trumpets, lamps, and pitchers, went obeying God's command. Blow thy trumpets, break thy pitchers, hold thy lamp with thy hand along the line. Cry the sword of the Lord and Gideon, the sword of the Lord and Gideon, the sword of the Lord and Gideon, and the victory shall be thine. God was mighty to deliver, and they fought without a sword, wielding not but torch and trumpet, and Jehovah's mighty word. Gideon's men were but a handful, yet on God they could rely, and the army panic-stricken fled before their battle cry. Blow the Lord, blow thy trumpet, break thy pitcher, Hold thy lamp within thy hand along the line. Cry, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, and victory shall be thine. Go ye forth to bloodless battle in the army of the Lord. Seek the trumpet of his kingdoms, sound his name with one accord. Break thy darkened earthly vessel, flash the light of the sacred word. Flash the light of holy living, let the voice of God be heard. Blow thy trumpets, break thy pitcher, hold the lamp within the holding along the line. Cry. The sword of the Lord of Gideon, the sword of the Lord of Gideon, sword of the Lord of Gideon, and victory shall be thine. Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe. I will be your narrator, Shenandoah Briscoe, and today we are going to be con trying to get through the Bible within one year. Today is day 88. We're going to be covering Judges 7 through 8 and Luke 5, 1 through 6. Father, I just ask for purity in voice and articulation so that this narration may be a blessing to you and to all of those who are tuning in. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. And they all said, Amen. Gideon defeats the Medanites. Early in the morning, Jerob Baal, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Moreh. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me. My own strength has saved me. Now announce to the army, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Galilee. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, There are still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will thin them out for you there. If I say, This one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say, This one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. The Lord, There the Lord told him, Separate those who lap the water with their tongues, as a dog laps from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred of them drank from cupped hands, lapping like dogs. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men that lapped, I will save you and give the Mennonites into your hands. 
Let all the others go home. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites home, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Now the camp of Maiden lay below him in the valley. During that night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, go down against the camp, because I am going to give it into your hands. If you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Para, and listen to what they are saying. Afterward, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, he his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. The Mennonites, the Amalekites, and all the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley, thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sands on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley bread came tumbling into the midnight camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, Gideon's son of Josh, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he bowed down and worshipped. He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Dividing the three hundred men into three companies, he placed trumpets and empty jars in the hands of all of them with torches inside. Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp blow yours and shout for the Lord and for, G and for Gideon. Gideon and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the Midland watch, just after they had changed the guard. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars, grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets. They were to blow. They shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Mennonites ran, crying out as they fled. When the three hundred trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Beth Shittaha toward Zareth, as far as the border of Abel Mahala, near Tabith. Israelites from Nephetal, Asher, and all Manash were called out, and they pursued the Midianites. Gideon sent messengers throughout the hill country of Ephraim, saying, Come down against the Midianites and seize the waters of the Jordan ahead of them as far as Beth Barah. So all the men of Ephraim call, were called out, and they seized the waters of the Jordan as far as Beth Barah. They also captured two of the Midianites leaders, Oreb and Zeb. They killed Oreb at the rock of Oreb, and Zeb at the winepress of Zeb. They pursued the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was by the Jordan. 
Zebra and Zalmuna. Judges eight. Now the Ephraimites asked Gideon, Why have you treated us like this? Why didn't you call us when you were to fight Mid Midden? And they cha challenged him vigorously. But he answered them, What have I accomplished compared to you? Aren't the gleanings of Ephraim's grapes better than the full grape harvested of Abizur? God gave Oreb and Zebi, the Midianite leaders, into your hands. What was I able to do to compare to you? At this, their resentment against him subsided. Gideon and his 300 men, exhausted, yet kept up the pursuit, came to the Jordan and crossed it. He said to the men of Sukkoth, give my troops some bread. They are worn out, and I am still pursuing Zebah and Zalaban, the kings of Midian. But the officials of Sukkoth said, Do you already have the hands of Zebah and Solomon in your possession? Why should we give you give bread to your troops? Then Gideon replied, Just for that, when the Lord has given Zeba and Zemula into my hands, I will tear your flesh with desert thorns and briars. From there he went to Pinau and made the same request of them. But they answered as the men of Sakoth had. So he said to the men of Pino, when I return in triumph, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalaman were in Korkor, Karkor with a force of about 15,000 men, all that were left of the armies of the eastern peoples. A hundred and twenty thousand swordsmen had fallen. Gideon went up by the route of the nomads east of Noba, and Jebuith and attacked the unsuspecting army. Zeba and Zolomon, the two kings of Midden, fled, but he pursued them and captured them, routing their entire army. Gideon, son of Joshua, then returned from the battle by the pass of Harris. He caught a young man of Skalkaloth and questioned him, and the young man wrote down for him the names of the 77 officials of Skalkaloth, the elders of the town. Then Gideon came and said to the men of Sakoth. Here are Ziba and Zalaman, about whom you taunted me by saying, Do you already have the heads of Zebra and Zalaman in your possession? Why should we give bread to you to your exhausted men? He took the elders of the town and taught the men of Sakoth a lesson by punishing them, punishing them with desert thorns and briars. He also pulled down the tower of Pinau and killed the men of the town. Then he asked Zavar and Zalaman, What kind of men did you kill at Tavar? Men like you, they answered, each one with the bearing of a prince. Gideon replied, those were my brothers, the sons of my own mother. As surely as the Lord lives, if you had spared their lives, I would not kill you. Turning to Jether, his oldest son, 
he said, Kill them. But Jether did not draw his sword, because he was only a boy and was afraid. Zeba and Zalama said, Come, do it yourself, as is the man, so is his strength. So Gideon stepped forward and killed them, and took the ornaments off their camels' necks. Gideon, Gideon, Gideon's Ephod The Israelites said to Gideon, Ruler over us, you, your son, and your grandsons, because you have saved us from the hand of Midian. But Gideon told them, I will not rule over you, nor will my son rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. And he said, I do have one request, that each of you give me an earring from your share of the plunder. It was the custom of the Ishmaelites to wear gold earrings. They answered, We'll be glad to give them. So they spread out the weight of the gold rings he asked for came to 1,700 shekels, not counting the ornaments, the pendants, and the purple garments worn by the kings of Midian, or the chains that were on their camels' necks. Gideon made the gold into an ephod, which he placed in Ophrim, his town. All Israel prostituted themselves by worshipping it there, and it became a snare to Gideon and his family. Gideon's Death Thus Midian was subdued before the Israelites, and did not rise, raise its head again during Gideon's lifetime. The land had peace forty years. Jerubal Bela, son of Joash, went back home to live. He had seventy sons of his own, for he had many wives. His concubines who lived in Shechem, Shishkem, Shishkem, also bore him sons, whom he named Abelmech, Gideon, son of Josh, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of his father Josh in Ophrim of the Abizrites. No sooner had Gideon died than the Israelites again prostituted themselves to the Baals. They set up Baal birth as their God, and did not remember the Lord their God, who had rescued them from the hands of all their enemies on every side. They also failed to show any loyalty to the family of Jerubbaal, that is, Gideon. In spite of all the good things he had done for them, that concludes Judges 7 through 8. Now we will turn to Luke 5, 1 through 16. Jesus calls his first disciples. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen, who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and he asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish 
that their nets began to break. So they signaled to their par partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, and left everything, and followed him. Jesus heals a man with leprosy. Luke 12 While Jesus was in one of the towns, a man came along who was covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he fell with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Then Jesus ordered him, Do not tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifice that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. And that continues the Bible with Briscoe for today. That concludes, sorry, that concludes the Bible with Briscoe for today. And tomorrow we will be covering Judges 9 through 10 and Luke 5, uh, Luke 5, 17 through 39. Father, I just pray that this was a blessing to you and to all of those who tuned in today. I also pray that they all come back tomorrow and we can continue with the Bible with Briscoe. And in the meanwhile, have a blessed day. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen.